By 10.30 a.m., the Confederate onslaught starts to overwhelm Grant's right flank. Attacks push Sherman and McClarendon back, first to the crossroads of the Purdy and Corinth roads, and then to Jones Field, a mile and a half from Pittsburgh Landing. Johnston succeeds in bending Grant's line, but in the wrong direction, toward Pittsburgh Landing, where the line can be shorter and stronger. With the Union right flank in retreat, entire Confederate regiments fall out of line to Eden Pillage. This lull allows Sherman and McClarendon to regroup and launch a ferocious counterattack. By noon, they've rolled over the unprepared looting Confederates. For the next three hours, Sherman and McClarendon's determined stand will force Johnston to commit his last reserves and will occupy the entire western two-thirds of the Confederate army. Confederate brigades on Johnston's right make repeated attempts to dislodge Stephen Hurlbut's division from a blooming peach orchard just south of a pond where the dying crawl for a final drink. By two o'clock, Hurlbut's line begins to give after Johnston personally rallies his brigades to attack in mass. Johnston had an old dueling wound that kept his right leg numb most of the time. He may not have paid much mind to the mini ball that severed his artery. By 2.45, Johnston bleeds to death. He is the highest ranking officer to be killed during the Civil War. In Grant Center, the division of W.H.O. Wallace and the remnants of Prentice's ranks form a half-mile front and a thick overgrowth along an old wagon cut. 6,200 men and 25 cannon make the names of the places there, the Sunken Road, the Hornet's Nest, synonymous with bloodshed. 